Welcome back guys. So in this video, I'm going to move ahead from question number 26 till question number 30. So let us start this without wasting time. So question number 26 says that I have a function defined by this for all the values of x between minus two and plus two inclusive what is going to be the integral of f of x. So my function is a piecewise defined function and it's defined by using some sort of maximum between two functions. So, so to understand this thing, I will graph this function and then I will simply integrate the function. So the first part you can see is four minus x square, square root of, 4 minus x square and uh, let me set it equal to y. If I square both sides, I will get this. If I take negative x square on another side, I will get x square plus y square equals 4, which I can write 2 square. So you know very well, this is simply an equation of a circle with radius 2 and obviously center at the origin. So I'm going to draw a circle. So this is, this is the circle and this is zero and this is one, this is two and this is negative one and this is negative two. But this is a square root of a square root function with only positive square root then the graph is going to be the upper one, not the lower one. So I'm going to, going to remove the lower part from this. You can see I have just removed the lower part. So this is four minus X squared. Let me draw another one, which is, which is X plus two. So, at x is equal to zero, this would be zero, and then we can take it out. So it's it's some sort of a straight line, but let me let me sorry let me take this uh maybe let me take it mm, yeah it's okay only here so y is equal to x plus 2 would be a straight line you can see like this and i'm only interested between this negative 2 and positive 2 and i have to integrate this function between negative 2 and positive 2 but the function is defined by using two pieces i have to take the maximum of the pieces mm -hmm. now you can see from from this lower black line and upper blue line, the maximum is defined to be by the upper blue line. So in this region, my function is defined by, so from negative two to zero, my function is defined by a square root of four minus X square. So I'm going to erase this lower part, you can see, sorry, why? So I'm going to erase this lower part. Maybe no other removal is required. And you can see from the right hand side from zero to two, the maximum function is two plus X. So I'm going to, not this, I'm going to It is this lower part. So this is how my function is defined. From negative two to zero, it's a square root of four minus X square. And from zero to two, it is defined to be by two plus X. Now you have to integrate this. So obviously, so let me do it here. Negative two to two, F of X DX is from negative two to zero and zero to from negative 2 to 0, this is 4 minus x squared dx 
and this is 2 plus x dx. Seemingly, the first integral is a bit difficult because it is square root of some, some sort of 4 minus x square. We can apply trigonometric substitution or some other things. And the second integral is very simple. But for the first integral, you know very well, integral is simply area under the curve. So I'm simply interested in this area, the area of this fourth part of a circle or the quadrant. So what's going to be the area of a circle? You know very well pi r square, but since this is going to be the fourth part, so divided by four, but the question is what is going to be the value of r? So you can see the radius is two here. So from here to here, the radius is two. So I'm simply substituting the value of r to be two. So this <clears throat> first integral is difficult, but I'm going to do it by using some other tricks. So uh, actually I don't want to waste time. But for the second integral, you can simply integrate and put the value that you have plus, so integral of two is two x and x is x square by two and the limit is zero to two. When I substitute r is equal to two, this becomes pi r square over, so pi two is square over four, two is square four, four, these are going to be canceled. If I substitute, x is equal to 2 in this whole expression, this becomes 4 plus 2 square 4 divided by 2, 2 minus, if I substitute 0, I get 0. So this becomes pi. So pi plus 6, which is my answer. So you can see this is option C, 6 plus pi or pi plus 6 doesn't matter. So simply this is a piecewise defined function. Make different pieces and integrate on each piece. If the integral is difficult, then apply some sort of other techniques. Okay, so now we have P, Q and R be logical propositions and we have this statement. P is true, then Q is true and r is true which of the following is a negation of the statement so the thing is that we have to negate the statement and for negation we have certain rules and let me tell you the rule here so the rule is if you have an implication p implies q well, let me write another way a implies b so if you have a statement a that implies some other statement b What's going to be the negation of this? The negation is A, A and negation of, sorry, negation of B. So negation of an implication is negation of uh, the first statement and the negation of the second statement. You can, you can go ahead and see that, okay, why this is true. You can simply read some books on logic. But I'm going to use this thing, the negation of an implication to answer the question that is given to me. So my statement is P implies, then means it implies Q and R. So Q and R. So, sorry. Okay, so this statement is A and this statement is B and I'm going to negate this. So my answer is going to be A and negation of B. So A is B and negation of B. So it's negation of Q and R. Q and R. So you know very well this is P and negation of q and this n becomes r negation of r so this is p and negation of q 
negation of q or negation of r so how you how you write this in some sort of a statement so it is given that p is true in the statement then this p is true you can see p is true in a and uh, rest, rest of the statements don't give us okay p is true then if q is true here and r is true then this q and this r should be false so you can see in the very first statement q is false r is false and you can see that okay we have end here so we have end here and we have r here we have r here so the correct answer for this one is simply a and you don't need to check other statements so just keep this thing in your mind this this rule and applying this rule you can simply check that okay and uh, like how can i do this question if you have if you know this rule okay next question number 28 with the help of this integral we have to evaluate this integral there are so many techniques to do this question but i will apply simply integration by parts which is going to be maybe simplest of all these so Okay, where it is, sorry. So let me add one page here. I don't understand this logic, but let me do it somewhere. Sorry. Okay. So I want to evaluate this thing integral x square e to the negative x square dx, and the limit is from zero to infinity. Zero to infinity. I want to evaluate this integral. What am I going to do? I'm going to write this x times x e to the negative x square dx from 0 to infinity. Now this power is negative x square and its derivative is going to be negative 2x. So what am I doing? I'm multiplying negative 2 and dividing 2 in front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this remains over there. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to apply integration by parts, and uh, this is my u, this is my u, and this whole is my v. So, you know very well u integral of v, so u same integral of e since i have exponential its derivative is there so my answer is simply the exponential function that i have so this is simply the reverse chain rule you know very well and the limit is from zero to infinity minus integral zero to infinity derivation of u which is going to be one and the integral of e which is e to the negative x square dx okay so now you can see if I apply my limits over here, if I apply x is equal to infinity, then this x gives me infinity, but this e to the negative x squared gives me zero. But there's that converges to zero faster than x. So at infinity, this whole is going to be zero in the sense of limits. You can apply L'Hopital rule or something else. 
When I substitute x is equal to 0, then this becomes 0. So this term is simply cancelled. Now this becomes negative time negative positive, 1 half, 0 to infinity, e to the negative x square dx. But what do we have? Negative infinity to infinity e to the negative x square dx is a square root of pi from what is uh, from what is given to us. So it is this thing, you know. But since the the function that we have is symmetric, then integral from zero to infinity would be half of this thing means square root of pi by two. You can also check this thing by splitting the integral from negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity. So I have one half and this integral, this integral is same as the integral that I told you now. This is a square root of pi by two, then this becomes a square root of pi by four. So the integral this that we are going to discuss that we discuss now is equal to this. So my answer is a which is square root of pi by 4. Let us move towards next question which is question number 29 which says that okay I have a function which is defined by this so on which of the following intervals the function is increasing. So it is like seemingly it is uh, a difficult question, but when you solve it, it's really simple. You know very well that, okay, let me solve this question here. So for a function to be increasing, f prime of x should be greater than zero for all x in whatever the interval you are looking for. So I will differentiate this function and for differentiation, I will apply fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is my function. I'm going to differentiate it. F prime of x is simply substituting this y is equal to x, nothing else. And then the derivative of x that I'll multiply, which is going to be one. So no need to multiply. And then evaluating this whole function at zero. Okay, this gives me a value, but multiplied by a derivative of zero, which is going to be zero. So the second term is zero and the first term is simply cos to the 23x and two plus sine to the 23x. So this is my derivative. Now to look for the values of x for which this derivative is uh, greater than zero. So for the second term, you know very well, sine takes values between positive one and negative one. So the minimum value is negative one. So this two is there, two minus one is one. So this, so this second bracket is always going to be greater than zero because it will give me at least one are at most three because sine takes values between negative one and positive one and two minus one gives me one. So this second bracket is always greater than zero. Now I want the first bracket greater than zero. So this is cos to the 23. So 23 is odd number. So if I give, let's say the value of cos is negative. So negative power 23 would be negative and uh, positive power 23 is again positive. If the power is positive, sorry, if the power is even, let's say 24, then we can think of something else. But since now just you have to look for where cos is positive and where cos is negative. You know very well some tricks from, from your college mathematics that, okay, I can write a silver T cup or x. So in the first quadrant, all are positive. And in this fourth quadrant, cosine is positive. So we are looking for where cosine is positive. So cosine is positive in first quadrant and fourth quadrant. So it takes values from negative pi by two, which is negative 90 to positive 90. 
So cos is positive between negative pi by two and positive pi by two. This is our answer. So the correct answer is B. We are done. This is really very simple question. Just you have to apply fundamental theorem of calculus, nothing else. Question number 30 seems to be difficult, but it is not actually. It says that which of the following best represents the graph of this function, which is defined parametrically. So let me tell you that for this, since this is involving cosines and sines, so you can simply neglect option A and D because these are some sort of a straight line. So just exclude them. And when this C is cos T and sin T, then this simply gives us a circle. So this option will not be related by B as well. Now we are left with only two options, which is option C and option E. But let me tell you, E is not correct option. What is the reason behind that? Because it has some point one one. Now you cannot give me a value of t, which I substitute here, so that the value of cos cube t and sine cube t both are going to be equal to one. Since their angle is t or the argument is t, so they are, they are ne never going to give me the value which is going to be equal and equal. it can be equal but both values are not are never going to be equal to exactly one if their argument is same. If the argument is different, then they can take value one, but this is their angle, their argument is T in both of those cases. So it is never going to be equal to one. So by the process of elimination, which is one of the powerful tool to solve questions, the correct option is C. So this is this is the result. Like it's really difficult to check that, okay, why this graph like this? But we can check by using different tricks. We can check these all the things. But by the process of elimination, this gives us answer, which is C. So see you in the next video with uh, more questions. Till then, goodbye.